Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. I'm right now here in my cramped study and welcome back to part number two of our interview sponsored by Invest in Hessen together with Gunjan, the founder of Inoplexus. Everybody who didn't see or listen to interview number one, go down here in the show note. There is a link to our interview number one where we've been talking about his company, how he got to found Inoplexus as well as what they are doing right now to fight against COVID-19. By the way, happy Father's Day. This uh, interview is published on the 21st of May, which in Germany is a public holiday as well as celebrated Father's Day. So uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. That said, welcome back, Gunjan. Glad to have you back here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, Since people already know a lot about you from part one of our interview let's hit straight to the uh part we've been missing so far because this interview is sponsored by invest in hessen and your company is headquartered in eschborn which uh for most american w- americans would be a borough or um not e- not the inner city of frankfurt but actually giving the history of germany this is actually a different city even though a very nice and small one but it's a different city just on the outskirts of frankfurt and you're headquartered there um i've seen you at as a speaker at the Founder Institute, and I do know you do have a lot to tell about fundraising here in Germany. We may add from an article published in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, a newspaper here from Frankfurt, uh, that so far you've raised more than 35 million euros um, for Inoplexus, and you're looking for 40 additional million. So that's I do assume that's not so easy to do. Let us uh, bathe in your wisdom and tell us a little bit about how to get 35 million startup funding in Germany. So uh, first of all, Germany is one of the best countries uh, to start a company. Um, of course, there are there are challenges, but which country doesn't have challenges? Uh, India has challenges. U.S. has challenges. Germany provides a very stable, very predictable legal system. Um, it has fantastic infrastructure. Um, if you have to, if you're in Berlin, uh, if you're in Frankfurt and you want to go to Munich, you can take a train, you can drive a car, uh, Berlin. Within three and a half hours, you can be in Berlin with a train. You can take a flight. You can go to Paris. It's the center of Europe. It's so super connected. Frankfurt, um, uh, it's very cosmopolitan, different nationalities. We have Koreans, Indians, Chinese uh, working in our company uh, here in the headquarters, apart from apart from Germans. Um, very cosmopolitan. Uh, very effective, uh, very central to wherever you want to travel to. Uh, Super big airport, you want to take a flight to India, you want to uh, go to US. Many a times I have afternoon meetings in New York and if the schedule is very tight, I take a Singapore Airways early morning flight, I land at 11 in JFK, I do my meetings and take the same flight back that flies off at nine in the evening. Next day morning, I'm back in front. That, that that means you you do a commute to New York just for a meeting, right? Yes, a couple of meetings or a meeting, uh, and I'm back practically the same day. Uh, so, uh, I mean, early morning the next day. So it's super efficient. You start, you sit in the plane at 8.30 in the morning, and you are back at the airport at 8.30 in the morning or 9 or uh, something. And you can you can start the day in Germany. So super central. The government, uh, the, the authorities here are very amenable, very supportive. 
Um, so it's a fantastic country to be in. Um, all this about the risk capital being scarce uh, in, in Europe and in Germany, uh, that's true to, uh, to some extent, but I must also say that the investors in this part of the world look at the long-term picture. They also look at the impact. Uh, they are very profound when it comes to do, doing a due diligence, looking at, uh, you know, under the hood to really understand what is, what is the technology, what is the unique selling proposition. But once they are convinced, they are partners for a long term. It's not spray and pray. Uh, it's very precise. It's, it's very much founded on basic principles and looking at the true USP. So we were founded in the end of 2015 and we were super lucky. At the end of 2016, we got HCS, which is uh, a venture capital investing in high tech companies, as well as uh, uh, one of the prolific uh, investors in Germany, uh, Christian, Christian Angermeyer, uh, who came on board as investors, and they have been with us since the beginning. We also have um, some very prolific investors uh, from Monaco, from, uh, from Germany, some of the other families, uh, and the EOS VC, uh, the venture capital arm of Block One, one of the largest uh, venture funds in the blockchain space, as investors. So, uh, of course, uh, any financing event, funding event is not easy, but what is easy in life? Uh, but I believe if you have a true vision, you work hard towards that, uh, it's, it's not impossible or extremely difficult to get funding in this part of the world. Do you have like any advice, any ideas, um, how to uh, start when you're a new entrepreneur? For example, I talked to, um, a founder who failed with his first startup. He's very outspoken about it. And he also pitched regularly on fuck up night here in Frankfurt. He usually says, um, I do believe, um, I don't believe consultants anymore. He is usually listening to them and then ask, okay, whom did you do this with? What's their phone number so I can check? Uh, would, would you recommend like a similar approach? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, must says, I don't know, look at basic principles. So, or, you know, my maths teacher always said, assume means making an ass of you and me. So, Uh, so just listening, listening to people and believing blindly doesn't make sense. And there are many experts and super consultants running around uh, knowing the world. But if they would know the world, they all would be super successful. So uh, everybody has to chart his or her own course. Uh, I am a genuine believer in your instinct, in what you believe in deeply. You shouldn't be stupid and, you know, self blindly, you know, you shouldn't believe your own bullshit. So be very factual, but uh, also don't believe uh, the bullshit from others. Uh, you, you should be very factual. You should question everything and, and try to get facts to make your own decision. But you're absolutely right. There are consultants showing slides because they know the world. There are many other experts. There are experts in every field. I was myself in consulting. So I know six months you are an expert for something. The next six months you could be an expert for something else. Uh, no human being is, uh, you know, is made to do so many PhDs or postdocs in such a short span of time. So I wonder how you could produce so many experts out of the same person. Um, But yeah, if you look at facts and you would look work with basic principles, you would make the right decisions. 
Yes, as I always say, uh, do your homework. We'll also link to a lot of due diligence lists because if you are a startup and an investor approaches you, there's also your duty to do due diligence on them. And if you're screwed at one point because you did not look at the um, investor, it's actually not the investor's fault. It's your fault. Don't fall into this trap. It's what I usually say. Um, that said, are there uh, some points you would, from your personal experience, like highlight um, founders should look, should have a focus on, should have a look at, uh, for example, the track record, the personality of the investor, the depth of the pockets, what what would be um, points you would be looking at for an investor? So the first uh, thing I would um, look at uh, with an investor is the alignment on the vision. So what does that investor believe your company could be or should be? This is extremely important because if the vision is different, then you have a big, big problem. Small pockets, deep pockets, big network, small network, smart capital or strategic capital with experience in the industry, yes or no. Everything else is secondary. The first and the foremost thing is vision because if there is a fallout eventually, I mean, most of the fallouts are because of a different uh, vision of the future uh, when the directions are not convergent, but divergent. Um, and that's what uh, can kill companies. So you need full alignment there. And the second thing is interpersonal chemistry. I mean, whatever, even if you have a fund, a specialized fund investing in you, in the end, it's people that work with people. So as investors would like to see the person in you, many people say, you know, I, uh, you know they invest in people, not in companies. Uh, you also seek investors who are people. So uh, the personal chemistry needs to work. You have people who are more communicative, less communicative. Uh, there are people who are more uh, long-term oriented. Some are slightly less long-term oriented. Different habits, interests, perceptions, but it's important that you could find a common ground to always have a very honest conversation, heart to heart, with that investor. That's extremely important because, again, you know, the tests always come. There are always hard times. It's uh, you would always uh, assume roses on your way, but you would you would find. Uh, extremely difficult times in your journey. And it's in those difficult times more so that you require a very honest discussion and very honest conversation. So that's the second thing I would look at an investor and then everything else follows. Hmm, that, that's interesting because usually you do see a lot of due diligence lists and um, there are a lot of facts you should check, but actually you're touching a very interesting topic because before you check all the facts, you should check the stuff that you cannot do like on a usual list. So you have to have conversations and that's one of the reasons fundraising is not uh, at the snap of a finger, but it does take time quite a lot of time actually um since this is sponsored by invest in hessen um is there a certain reason you're headquartered in hessen uh, how do you like the environment there and being an entrepreneur there what does it mean for you hessen is a natural home for startups and entrepreneurs and i'm not saying that to make you happy uh, you have the best airport you land from US, from India in 30 minutes, I'm sitting in a taxi, max 30 minutes. In 20 minutes, I'm in my office back. Flights, uh, super connections to different parts of the world. You don't uh, even have to think, plan long. Uh, many big farmers around, Merck, 
in Darmstadt with Super Leaders, Sanofi, Beringer Ingelheim, BioNTech, one of the most successful European biotechs in Mainz, everybody around. Uh, the banking center of Europe uh, with London is here in Frankfurt. Um, and the government is extremely supportive, uh, not just the, uh, the, the chief minister of the state of Hessen, Mr. Bouffier, uh, his entire leadership team, but also the, the mayor, the Lord Mayor of Frankfurt, uh, Mr. Feldman. So they are very supportive. They all want to have to do everything they could to support entrepreneurs in this state. There is such a fantastic infrastructure. In terms of universities, you have the Goethe University, you have TU Darmstadt, you have Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, you have European Business School. So you have all the firepower from the academic side that's needed, uh, super airport, and a very cosmopolitan environment. Um, and what I also like about Hessen and Frankfurt in general, it's, you know, there is no uh, fictitious uh, or very um, artificial way of uh, being cool here. If you are an entrepreneur, um, you know, you can be an entrepreneur. You could uh, you could do serious business. You you know, there is no fake startup culture. You know, the it's a very uh, serious way of doing entrepreneurship, a sincere way of doing entrepreneurship, where all the stakeholders from the government, from from uh, the industry are supportive in your endeavors. And now the crucial question uh, for the area here. Um, do you already like Apfelwein? <laughs> yeah, the wine is fantastic. Apple wine, uh, I still go to this um, super restaurant in the Frankfurt city on the other side of the river where uh, sometimes the, the service is not the most friendly, but the food is amazing. And the apple wine taste, tastes great. Um, there you are more Frankfurter than I am because um, I, I was born and raised not too far away from Frankfurt, but I'm still not used to wine made out of apples. That said, it was just such a pleasure having you here for all this time. Thank you very much. It was just a great pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.